guys, it's Alice, and today I thought I would share with you my nonfiction November TBR. I'm sure most of you guys know, but if you don't, nonfiction November is a month long readathon where the whole point is just to read more nonfiction than you usually do. And I love this readathon because one, I love nonfiction. And two, it's a very, very chill readathon. Like, there are some prompts that you can use, but you can just kind of read whatever you want. Like, all you need to do is to read a little bit more nonfiction than usual. Now, this year, I can tell that I've really leaned much more towards fiction than nonfiction. And I've read less nonfiction this year than I did in like the past two, three years. And I think the reason for that is that. 2020 has been the year of escapism so I've sort of just like fallen off the habit of reading nonfiction but I do love it and this readathon reminds me how much I love it and how many books I actually do want to read so I've picked out some books from my shelves and I also went and got some new books because I will take any excuse I can get. I'm probably not going to end up reading all of the books that I've picked out this month because I think I've just picked out too many, but these are like the ones I am most excited about and maybe I can read half this month. I don't know if that's too ambitious. Maybe. I can try. I thought I'd show you the newest books that I got first because I'm very excited about them. It's always exciting to get new books. I got these two and they're both like adventure exploration nonfiction, which is one of my favorite like subgenres. And the first one is Jungle of Stone by William Carlson. This is the story of two adventurers who in 1839 went into the jungle in Central America because they had heard that there were some like stone ruins there that they wanted to check out and they found them and this turned out to be like ruins of some sort of Mayan civilization. And I think that their discovery sort of changed people's views on who the Mayans were because they actually had a very complex culture and a lot of traditions and they were quite advanced. Now, I feel like we knew who the Mayans were before 1839 though, didn't we? Because at some point, like the Spanish went over there and ruined everything. I really don't know a lot about the Mayans, but I'm assuming this will teach me a lot. The second book that I got was The Curse of Oak Island by Randall Sullivan. This is like a treasure hunt type of book and it's about Oak Island, obviously, which is rumored to have this buried treasure. And I think this is all about the history of Oak Island and where like the legend comes from. And there are like pirates and maps and like stone carvings and all kinds of amazing things. I'm very, very excited. I don't know a lot about Oak Island. I feel like I've read a little bit about it in some other book at some point, but I've really forgotten most of it, except that there's some sort of like money pit, like a rumored money pit somewhere on this island. Then I have got The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. This book explores the lives of the victims of Jack the Ripper, who was a serial killer roaming around London in the late 1800s. I don't know why I'm telling you that, I'm sure everyone knows. But this book, instead of taking a look at Jack the Ripper, it takes a look at the people who were murdered by him. And I feel like most of us have this impression that all of those women were sex workers, but apparently that's not entirely true. Maybe they were, but at least... There was also more to their stories, you know, and this book is all about that. And I think that's so interesting. I love when books like take a different approach to a really famous case or something like that. So I think this is going to be amazing. I've heard so many good things about this book, so I have very high hopes. Of course, we have to have a book about feminism, and this one is also about race, and it is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. The full title of this says, Notes from the Women White Feminists Forgot, and I think this is going to be such an interesting book. I think it's a lot about like intersectionality and just how we also need to focus on filling the basic needs of all women before we sort of move on to these bigger issues, I guess, and I think this is going to be very informative. I'm ready to have my eyes opened, and I think it's important to be reminded of all of the problems that are there, but you don't always see because you don't have them, and I think that, that this book really takes a look at that. Then I have got a book in Norwegian, and it is Hufemkos Brasvunder Osnakomilönsen by 
Bjorn Henning Ødegård and Fredrik Sjåstadnes. This translates to 25 conspiracies you can talk about during your lunch break and it's written by these guys who are the hosts of one of my favorite podcasts which is Konspirationspodden, which means the conspiracy podcast and it's kind of weird that I like that podcast so much because I generally do not like conspiracy theories but there's just something about the way that they approach it that I think is really interesting. They focus a lot about facts and see if there's actually something like weird there. And this book is just kind of like their podcast. It's like bite-sized pieces of conspiracy theories. Next, we have got maybe one of my favorite titles ever, and it is Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? and Other Questions About Dead Bodies by Caitlin Dowdy. Dowdy is a mortician and she is super funny and knowledgeable and I read her book From Here to Eternity last year and I thought that book was amazing. It's about like death rituals and burials around the world. It's very very interesting. This one though is about what happens to our bodies when we die and I feel like Dowdy's style is really informative and it's like darkly funny but it's never disrespectful and this one I think has some illustrations which is really cool and I do actually want to know if a cat would eat you after you died although there's something like especially disgusting about eyeballs <laughs> I kind of like I want to know but I also don't want to know <laughs> second to last we have got The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre I really need to try and read this book because it sounds so good it's about this Russian KGB spy who like at some point during the Cold War started working for MI6 because he saw the corruption and the criminality of his country which was at that point the Soviet Union and I've just heard amazing things about this it's apparently like one of the best spy nonfiction books ever and I've never really read any nonfiction about spies and I think it's gonna be amazing lastly I've actually picked out a book that I have already read and I'm thinking of maybe rereading and it is Over the Edge of the World by Lawrence Burgreen. This is one of the first nonfiction books that I ever read as an adult by like my own initiative and this one completely like blew my mind and it opened my eyes to nonfiction because I really thought that nonfiction wasn't for me before that which is crazy because there are so many subgenres of nonfiction <laughs> there are like thousands but I found this and it blew my mind. It's a historical book about Ferdinand Magellan's circumnavigation of the world. So it's the first time in the 1500s, I think it was. It was the first time someone traveled all around the globe. And I just think that's so fun. This book is really interesting. It's very detailed, but it's not boring. And I just love that they managed to do that back then. And it must have been such an amazing thing, like the first time that happened. I sound like such a nerd, but this book really is very, very good. Okay guys, those are all the books that I've picked out for my nonfiction November TBR. And as always, when I film these videos, I immediately want to go and like read all of these books now. But I can't do that because I can't read all of them all at once. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes throughout the month. I'd love to know if you are participating in Nonfiction November and what books you are planning on reading. And I'll see you soon. Bye.